All right, today is Wednesday, August 22, 2018. This is the meeting of the Kubernetes CSI implementation group. We're going to go over the uh, tasks that we've been working on, get a status update and see where we are. Code freeze for uh, the next Kubernetes release is in one and a half weeks. We've got the rest of this week and then next week, and then September 4th is code freeze. Um, so let's uh, get started. First up, uh, we have the Kubelet device registration mechanism. Uh, this is moving to beta. There are a set of tasks uh, that uh, we are tracking to move that to beta and then additional tasks on the CSI side uh, for that. So first up is uh, lifecycle changes uh, that the Kubernetes uh, device registration mechanism authors are pushing. Um, I believe uh, Vlad provided feedback on that PR and was awaiting a uh, response. Vlad, do you have any updates from them? Um, it, it looks like he, uh, I got some response back. I just haven't back, I haven't been back to kind of um, see what, what those responses are. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, but looks like there is progress there. Uh, yep. So we're looking good. On that, um, are are there any other PRs that are uh, going to need to go in after this? Do you know? Um, probably not, because I think this is like a overarching PR. Okay, it has all the changes everywhere, including inside CSI. Got it. So I would imagine it's just one PR. Okay, so we need to make sure that the. CSI portion especially uh, makes sense. Right, right. That's the that's my next. Uh, I told them on on the PR review that it's probably going to be a second round. Okay. So much code. I know uh, on the uh, Slack channel he was asking about um, whether uh, what CSI should do during unregistration. Uh, okay. Or it should remove uh, label oh, okay. or anything like that. And I think I told him for now it might be okay just to do nothing. And then within the CSI team, we can figure out what we need to do and add that in later as long as the hook exists. Right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll I think also... Ping, you had some thoughts on, uh, on registration for topology labels, right? Yeah. Uh, we'll probably uh, keep the labels as they are, uh, but remove the annotations or, or the, uh, the node, node info. Okay. Uh, right now, right now in the code, I basically have it so that uh, upon error on the call to get node info, uh, we do we do do an unregistration step uh, to remove all the information. But that same call can be can be used in the unregistered uh, unregister hook once that's available too. Got it. Okay, so uh, we'll keep an eye out for that. I guess uh, we can do that as a follow up if needed. Uh, next up is CSI end-to-end -end testing. Um, I think it, this might be something that Sergey is planning to work on. Is that correct, Vlad? Once he gets back. Yeah, once he gets back. I haven't heard from him. I'll, I'll, I'll ping him today to figure out uh, his availability at all. Okay. Uh, you know, it falls into some you? of the stuff that we're doing too, right? Some of the validation that we had a call about last Friday. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, if someone on your team is willing to pick it up, that'd be great. Do we have? Is there a specific task for this, or is it just kind of a? It is a specific task. So we already have an end-to-end -end test for CSI in Kubernetes. Right. Currently, it's exercising the path where the driver registrar does the registration. Uh, what we want is to enable this optional Kubelet device registration mechanism as part of this new test, so that it exercises the new path, which is the Kubelet applying uh, these labels, essentially, or these uh, annotations. Um, so if we could have a test written that exercises that, that would be excellent. Okay, well, I say that now. I mean, it's probably going to be a while before we get to this specific task. So okay. I'll put your... Uh... And uh, Vlad and Brad, could you keep me in the loop as well? Because I'm trying to get some uh, topology tests going through that same code path. Okay. Yeah, thanks. Sure. 
All right, uh, next up is CSI documentation on how all of this works. Uh, we could probably wait till post code freeze for that. Uh, driver registrar, proxy, or documentation. We decided we're gonna do documentation, so we'll add additional documentation here to try and uh, explain away why there are two Unix domain sockets, how they interact, how to use them, all that kind of stuff. So that's post code freeze, we'll do the documentation on that. Uh, try to push registration proto into CSI spec. Uh, I think that's just still a pending item. Uh, we'll follow up on that at some point. Uh, CSI cluster driver registry uh, proposal is out. Um, and uh, I've been uh, working with uh, API reviewers and SIG architecture to try and figure out uh, where we should put uh, put the schema, the, the types.go files for the new cluster driver registry. Um, because if the components that consume it were completely out of tree, then it would be simple. We would put it out of tree. But since the components that consume it, the attach, detach, control, or kubelet are part of the core of Kubernetes, uh, there's somewhat of a question about where this should live. Uh, and uh, ultimately, yesterday, it looks like we concluded after lots and lots of back and forth that it's going, the types themselves are going to live as part of the Kubernetes core. So it would be github.com slash Kubernetes, Kubernetes packages slash APIs. There will be a new uh, group created there uh, with uh, types.go put underneath there. Uh, but those types are not going to be pre-installed in the Kubernetes API server. Instead, they're going to be installed as a CRD uh, and uh, uh, so we got approval for that, but what they want us to do is not use the default API staging uh, and not have it uh, shipped as part of github.com slash Kubernetes slash APIs. Uh, they want us to do a separate uh, repository for it. Uh, so I opened up a request to have a new repository created. Uh, I saw that Jan has a question about why we're requesting two uh, repositories instead of one. Uh, I was requesting CSI-APIs and CSI-ClientGo. Uh, I was following the model of the existing staging directory, which is broken, it publishes to two different repos. But Jan pointed out that newer staging directories are actually putting both in the same repository, and I'm okay with that. Um, so I'll modify that request to drop uh, client go and just have CSI dash APIs. And then, uh, once that's set up, then we can, uh, have, uh, turn on the end to end, uh, 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 mechanism that will publish, uh, publish to that repository. Um, I'm getting a lot of help from Jan on how to do that. I think he's more familiar with how it works than I am. Uh, he had some advice on the PR on how to unblock some of the issues on that PR. So, all of that work is in progress. Uh, it works completely differently when you have your API outside of Kubernetes slash API. The generation okay. works completely differently. I tried something today. Uh, I can post a link there. Uh, I got to points where I have staging with new API, everything generated and in kubelet I have informer for CSI driver so I can check in the driver if driver is attachable or not and if needs a volume attach or not uh, awesome. volume info or not uh, I think at this time it could be worth uh, adding the CSI node info to the PR because yep. when we just need one approval and not. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, that makes sense to me. All right, uh, so okay. I'll take a look at that the, then. The PR, like, uh, it has some debugging code and also the code that in Qubit, but it's not necessary. So if you just take a few first um, commits and make a new PR for new API and pass it through approvals. Okay. That would be fine. Do you want me to uh, just, do you want to just use this as the PR that gets, goes in, or do you want me to take this and then modify it? Um, no, just, just cherry pick my commits and 
Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I will take a look at this. Thanks. Um, Chang, if you look at this PR, uh, there is uh, CSI Node Info already, and okay. Kubelet has client to it. So if you want, you can create Informer and do whatever you want with the topology stuff there. Okay. Awesome. Thanks. So. Uh, what part of what part of the API has to live internally to to Kubernetes? The uh, um, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> well, it's complicated. Uh, since this API is going to be used by Kubernetes core, it needs to live in the same repository. Otherwise, there are some ugly uh, uh, dependencies that are not sol solvable. So but we couldn't vendor the API like we do uh, API machinery? Um, not really. Uh, it is in staging directory in Kubernetes. Kubernetes, and there will be a bot that syncs it somewhere out okay. of this repository to, I don't know, Kubernetes slash CSI dash API. And we will vendor that. Hmm. OK. Yeah, it's super complicated. And so just to be clear, we are no longer putting types.go inside packages API? Um, no, that's just for the internal API in API server. And, and we so have CRDs for that. OK. So you only put it into staging. And yes. from staging, it uh, gets published out. Yes. And you use staging from the Kubelet and from, a, uh, from Apache Dish Controller. Right. And then uh, generated code gets built off of whatever is in staging. Yeah. Okay. And you already, uh, this includes the modifications uh, that say uh, this is special, build it slightly differently. Uh, yeah, yeah, there is tiny patch in code again, sh. Awesome. It just adds new, new directory to look at. To look at. Great. Uh, this is immensely helpful. Thank you very much, Jan. Uh, so I'll take a look at that and use that as a basis for my PR. Uh, mm -hmm. And then uh, hopefully have something soon. Um, so next, uh, uh, part of this uh, is going to be the uh, node info, which the topology stuff is relying on. Uh, and then I think the rest of these are going to get unblocked as soon as that goes in. Uh, so new node status field for CSI drivers uh, is going to be, I'll include that as part of that PR. Um, then do not uh, require attach gets unblocked as soon as this merges. Uh, inline volume support. Uh, I think, uh, Vlad, you've been working on in parallel. Uh, do you want to give a status update there or anything that you're blocked on still? Um. So we, we've been going back and forth, kind of reviewing between you and I and, and, and Jan the, the direction we're going to take the proposal. Mm -hmm. um, even this morning, I had a couple of questions I, I, I shot up, I shot to, uh, to Jan. So um, once we kind of clarify uh, the latest changes, which I've already pushed a, a, an update to Jan's P, uh, original PR. So he's, he's reviewed that. And once we kind of, iron out all the, the all the rough edges then um, we should be looking pretty good hopefully today and then I can resume the the, the code that uh, that we're working on that, that I started last week okay uh, so to give everybody else context on some of the design issues here uh, one was uh, the the big one was CSI currently requires a volume handle when it does a mount operation, a, a basically a node publish operation. Um, and when you have local ephemeral volumes, they don't really have a true provisioning step. They don't call create volume. Instead, what they do is they do provisioning as part of the mount operation, as part of the, uh, uh, the node publish operation. Uh, and because they do that, they don't really have a notion of a volume ID. And uh, the question is, if we have this inline volume support, and the primary purpose of this inline volume support is to support these ephemeral volumes, uh, we're going to add 
to the API a volume handle field that we expose to the end user, what should the end user set it to for a local ephemeral volume? So think about it like as a config map or uh, empty dir or something. What is, what is the value of the volume handle? And um, what we decided there is that for those types of volumes that don't care about what the volume handle is, Kubernetes should deterministically generate that volume handle. Uh, but we don't want to always generate it, right? If somebody doesn't specify it, but the driver expects it, we should not auto-generate it in that case. We should error or let the driver error. Um, and the way that the driver can communicate this to Kubernetes, whether it requires it or not, we decided is going to be the CSI uh, driver registry that we have. Uh, it'll have a Boolean, and I need to remember to add this uh, to say, um, you know, requires uh, uh, volume generation uh, or volume handle generation, and then maybe some options like whether what kind of volume handle it prefers. Uh, Jan had a couple of options around scoping it to either the pod or the main space. Yep. And I mean, that way, Kubernetes can automatically generate it, uh, and the user doesn't have to specify it. So much to do to update the the CSI info PR for that. Uh, yeah, I mean you could include it as part of the same uh, proposal that you have here, and then just say as part of, and then link to the one up here and say we're going to add uh, X, Y, and Z fields. Okay. And then I'll make sure to do that as I implement it. Yep, we'll do. Uh, so that was the big one. Uh, there was a couple other smaller questions. One was around attachable volumes uh, being tracked as a separate field in this proposal. And then we decided since it's part of the CSI cluster registry, it no longer needs to be added here. So that's going to be removed. Uh, and that was pretty much it. I think that was the last set of open questions on that PR. Um, so once Vlad uh, uh, updates the, the proposal, I think it should be in a good state to LGTM and merge. Uh, yeah. Next up is passing workload information to CSI. Uh, the proposal looked good. Um, any uh, updates on this? Mm, not really. Okay. This is also awaiting uh, the CSI cluster registry. So as soon as that merges, that should uh, be unblocked as well. And then uh, Kubernetes CSI topology support. Uh, Chang, any updates on this? Yeah, uh, I submitted a PR last night. Um, still mostly work in progress, but the, most of the functionality is there. Um, some key things that are missing are the, uh, the, the CSI node info, uh, which I hope to very pick from Jan's PR today and see, see how that looks. Um, also, wanted, I was, also wanted to add some, a, uh, some uh, retry logic for the CSI calls. And if anyone has guidance on that, on what the proper way to do it is, uh, please let me know. Uh, and other than that, the unit test is there, E2E test I'm waiting for, um, actually Kubelet registration mechanism to, um, to work in E2E and uh, we can go from there. Cool, excellent. Um, so please take a look at that PR and uh, if you, is this the PR up here, uh, Jing? Yeah, that's okay, it. Great. So please take a look at that if, uh, if you're interested and uh, we can uh, start providing feedback um, so that uh, Cheng can address it and uh, go from there. Thank you. Uh, mount propagation to beta, uh, any updates oh. on that? Hey, whoa. Did we miss block? I had some questions on the raw block stuff. Uh, yeah, uh, raw block support. Uh, so bug fixes here, any updates here? Um, what were the questions, Brian? Right. Did you have a list of the bug fixes and improvements? I, I have a whole bunch of people asking on our site about block storage and CSI. Um, I have some, uh, I have some um, fix. Maybe they're not up here; they're further down. But some um, some tasks, some issues that that were open that um, kind of directly and indirectly with uh, would improve block. 
The, there is, I was just talking to Chris, there's one which is ex, um, has to do with uh, the external components. It probably should make it to this document as well. Um, so maybe uh, what uh, might be useful is to have one Kubernetes, Kubernetes issue opened to say CSI, uh, you know, like a big tracking issue for CSI uh, block improvements. So okay. Track everything through that. Uh, How and functional would you say it is? I mean, is it usable but with some performance issues or? It's not? usable with, with, uh, with issues and those issues are kind of hard to pin down because we don't have a lot of CSI um, drivers that support block to report their issues. So it's kind of chicken and the egg type of uh, situation. Is it fencing issues or is it, uh, do you have any idea, I mean, can you kind of like an idea of what the broader issues are or is it, maybe I should just scroll down and see what's at the bottom of the stack. Uh, so I just talked to, Chris, I was talking to Chris uh, Deshane before I joined the call, he, w one of the issues that he had reported what had to do with, um, with the mapping of how we're mapping um, the, the CSI capability versus uh, volume attributes. Um, I don't remember exactly. Uh, but basically that's supposedly that's one of the issues he ran into. Now, it is functional in the sense that you know, it, it will go through the motion of, of talking to the CSI driver and presenting a block device um, and go through the, the entire workflow of, of, uh, of uh, creating a block device and, and uh, attaching it, et cetera, et cetera. Um, what we don't have are a lot of use cases from implementation to give us feedback as far as what's, you know, what's further needed to improve it. Okay, so okay, so let me see if I can summarize this. There's, uh, there's some capability you're passing, uh, some volume attribute passing that's not necessarily happening. Uh, but beyond mm. that, there's more of just an uncertainty because we don't have a, a lot of tests going on. Yeah, we need we need block we need CSI block drivers um, to be implemented so we can test. I mean, the okay. the code that's in there is basically super alpha. And we knew that going in, and we knew that we needed to um, <clears throat> uh, to keep to use this this quarter to stabilize it. So if you have any, if you have a you know, if you have a block driver that that's in development, I would definitely welcome the the feedback. Yeah, actually, I do. The CSI Ember project has a whole bunch of uh, block storage drivers uh, okay. that they'd like to that they would like to you know, enable through this, mm -hmm. but I was a little unsure how stable the interface was. It sounds like they would be a good candidate to start the testing on this. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. The, the thing I mentioned about the mapping of the, the, the capability versus volume attributes, it's not a blocker. Uh, it's not that it, the, 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 it's not the, the case where the data is not being passed. It's the case that we're not doing a good job of it. Faithful. There's not a good one-to-one -one mapping between how CSI represents uh, its volume capabilities and how internally uh, Kubernetes uses the uh, read on uh, the, the the volume attributes. Uh, the read only, read many. Was it read only, read write only, read write only, and then read write many and then read only many. those attributes so those those three attributes need to be we, we there's a you know this is an opportunity to revisit them um to make sure that how they represent inside, inside kubernetes is is properly treated um the drivers know how to to to, to treat the um they're represented properly in, in the in the kubernetes driver okay, so I mean, in the csi driver is the concern that maybe the read write Many your read write once isn't being enforced at the CSI layer, and that you're saying you're saying that we have an opportunity to make sure that it's enforced, and we don't. Uh, the the concern. So the concern is, um, let me see if I can find that PR. 
while I'm talking to you, I'll, I'll look for it. So the, the concern is, is that the way that Kubernetes or the way that CSI interprets those values may not necessarily match exactly how Kubernetes does. So we need to kind of revisit. And that's what one of the, the issue that was open, that's what it was pointing out. Okay, I got you. So instead of doing the bonehead stuff that we did in Kubernetes with read write many CSI probably did it right, and we have to do some way to translate between. Them. Yeah, because the in the very early implementation, so what we have right now is in Kubernetes you can have volume attribute, you can have several volume attributes in in the spec for you know you can have you can put down read write many and read read only many for instance. So you can put both of those two attributes. So right now in the code, when it's presenting that attribute to CSI, it naively just picks item zero in, the, in that in that um, picks item zero in that array and try to match only on that instead of doing a more heuristic um, kind of deduction of what these two attributes may mean on the okay. CSI side. Now on the CSI side, it would really only be the driver that cares about it, right? Like the driver may or may not do something based on what that property is. Yeah, it, the driver, the, yeah, Kubernetes will blindly just pass that attributes to, to those attributes to the driver. I got you. It was kind of like a, it was a precondition for binding or a binding predicate in Kubernetes and now it could mean something. To right, exactly. Blindly, blindly. I got exactly. you. Okay, that's easy enough. Uh, yeah. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, so on this uh, CSI validation stuff, I'm gonna put block storage on there, and I'm also gonna tell the Ember guys, the CSI Ember guys, to to go forward and test this hardcore, and okay. hopefully we'll get some feedback from them. That would be great. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Cool. Thanks, guys. Sure. Okay, cool. Uh, so mount namespace propagation. Uh, there was a PR out. Uh, thank you to Brad and Fabio for that. Uh, is this a waiting? Hi, I GTM it. And Jordan is curious. If we declare a feature GA, do we keep it in the, in the list of features or do we remove it? Interesting. And, and it seems that both were used, were, both approaches were used in the past. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I guess we just need clarification from Sigarch on that. Very nice. All right, cool. Uh, that is a good problem to have. Uh, means it's pretty much ready to go. Okay, uh, we are three minutes over time. Are there any PRs that folks want to point out that need attention? Yeah, so the snapshot PRs. Uh, open yes. the reviews. Uh, so the snapshot controller, we added the unit test as a separate PR because it, it included large. So I thought it's better to keep it as a separate PR, uh, dependent on the snapshot controller one. So, yeah, so that's the, this is the snapshot controller one. And then, um, yeah, those are all snapshot controller. Okay. Um, so, so we addressed all the comments, basically. There are a couple of new ones um, okay. that we'll address, but uh, right. the comments from you, and Jan and, er and some of the early comments, we have already addressed all of those. So. Uh, all right, cool. I'll see if I can find some time to take a look at it today. Okay, and, that's great. Uh, and then uh, if I don't, just keep poking me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and, um, yeah. I think at this point, I'm probably not going to be able to review everything very closely, and I'm just going to trust you and merge it. And then if there's any bug okay. fixes, we can do them as follow-on PRs. Okay. Okay, yeah, that may be easier. So yeah. we we'll keep keep working on this one. There are yeah. so many small commits; it's kind of hard to keep to track of everything. Yeah, yeah. and uh, so the the data source API, um, 
him look at it. So he doesn't uh, want us to merge. Uh, you know, just the API change merge it first and work on the ready gate first uh, later. But he wants us to um, work on those together. So now we have added the ready gate feature um, as part of this PR. Okay. Um, but I think he has. Handling it as well, so I think Jean is going to talk to him later, uh, and then we'll see, and then we'll update this PR after that. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. This is going to be huge. <laughs> I uh, wonder if tying it with the readiness gate is going to slow us down a lot, but uh, without it, it probably isn't functional. So I can see that argument. Okay. Uh, thanks for that update, Ching. All right. Thanks, Nike. Okay, all right, thanks. Um, I'm going to skip over the rest of the bugs and uh, PRs uh, since we're over time, unless there's something uh, somebody really wants to call out or discuss. Uh, hi, uh, uh, this is Fat. Um, I, I want to just a quick update the uh, one of my PR about the document is merged. So I want to, uh, I have another PR is about, uh, is about uh, uh, adding a retry for uh, a CSI plugin. Uh, so this one is needs some review. Okay, is it yeah. uh, this PR right here? Yeah. Yes. And okay. Feng, Feng works with me. Um, so ah, perfect. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll uh, make time to take take a look back uh, to to look at this again, just to make sure we're we're it's solving the problem and um, that it, it's an, as intended. Okay. Cool. Thanks, Fan. Uh, appreciate all your work here, and uh, uh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And this one was merged, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, the documentation went. You can go ahead and mark that on the screen. All right, great. Uh, thank you very much. Anything else? Okay, then uh, we'll reconvene on Friday. Thank you okay. very much. Sure.